Well, good afternoon, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I'm actually down here in my man cave here on this Tuesday afternoon. I hope you're having a great day, and I appreciate each and every one of you guys watching. Um, I'm still dealing with this cold and things and trying to get over it and stuff, and um, my voice sounds like I have smoked literally 20 packs of cigarettes, and uh, hopefully I won't start doing any uh, coughing on here uh, for you guys. I was sitting here going through a, a bleach report, and they had an article about rookies that were disappointing on each team. And when I came to the Cowboys, I was curious to see, who, who, who are they saying is the most disappointing Dallas Cowboy rookie? And lo and behold, they came up with Jalen Tolbert. <coughs> Excuse me. And I was like, what the heck? So I started reading the article, and I want to read this article because this is kind of crazy. The Dallas Cowboys receiving core appeared to be thin before training camp even began this year. This unit took another blow when free agent pickup James Washington suffered a foot injury early in practice. Despite the lack of available weapons, Cowboys owner Jerry Jones <laughs> felt his young team's talent, namely rookie Jalen Tolbert, could fill the void while Washington and Michael Gallup, who is still recovering from a late ACL tear, are sidelines. After Dallas preseason opener, it would be hard to fault Jones for reneging on a, that statement and dipping into the free agent pile to swing a trade to acquire a proven veteran. Tolbert had been struggling to live up to the immense hype surrounding him. Expectations are sky high for a third round pick, but it takes some time for him to get adjusted to the quality of competition in the NFL. I was like, what the hell? I was like, Jalen Tolbert that I saw in training camp with Dak and him having great connections and stuff? Okay. Because <sighs> what I saw, what everybody saw was Jalen Tolbert had moved up to number two on the list because he was earning it. Not because Jerry Jones was having the hype of, oh, yeah, you know, we, we have a lot of hope in it. No, it's because he actually was earning it. He was playing. Him and Dak are on the same page. They're like, you know, yin and yang. But okay, go on. That much was obvious in Dallas's expedition open expedition open or against Denver Broncos. Target was targeted seven times across his forty offensive snaps, just catching two passes for ten yards. The South Alabama product's worst moment came in the second quarter when he dropped a potential fourth down conversion. And although the throw was uh, quarterback Cooper Rush was tipped, it was still a catchable ball. Then he was flagged for two for a false starts two possessions later. According to SI's Zach Dimnit, Dimnit, the 23-year-old called the game a learning experience and pledged to fix the issues in practice. If Tolbert doesn't show rapid improvement, the Cowboys in their injury-ravaged receiver room could be in for a rough start in 2022. Okay, let's go here for a second, okay? First thing, let's go with Cooper Rush. Cooper Rush was awful. The offense didn't have a pulse. The only thing that the offense did well with Cooper Rush out there was actually they ran the ball well. The offense was injured, excuse me, flagged repeatedly. I believe the offense ended up having 13 penalties against him. I think there were five against the defense or four against the defense. Maybe it was 12 against the offense and five against the defense, but regardless of that, the, def the offense with Cooper Rush had no, nothing going on. Cooper Rush was so out of place over there, it was crazy. Now, I'm not going to say that that was a great performance as far as preseason game went. But you can't take one game, Eagle fans, and one drive, Eagle fans, because it's crazy that people are now talking about um, Jalen Hurts being a MVP candidate off of a one drive in the preseason game against the Jets. Against the Jets. 
Now, that was the very first NFL experience game of his career. And here's the thing that's crazy about the NFL is with the NFL, now the kinder, gentler NFL, that games that you actually tackle and go full go or opportunities, there's only three before the season. You don't do it in practice. And you've got your backup quarterback throwing to him. If that was Dak Prescott throwing to him and we had that kind of result, I'd say, yeah. If we had a lack of production throughout training camp, I would say, yeah, that maybe he would be the most disappointing um, rookie that we had. But we're talking about a guy, first of all, who is a third-round drafted guy in his very first game with a backup quarterback who we all are looking at and saying, We'll take Ben DiAnucci over right now. Ben, ben, Di, ben DiAnucci over. Now, it would have been nice to have seen Tolbert actually playing with Ben DiAnucci, who seemed to be getting some mojo going and getting um, some play going. But this is one of those things that, you know, we you, you get articles that are sensational, and immediately you see Jalen Tolbert because, you know, Jalen Tolbert's actually been one of the bright spots of training camp on the wide receiver core. Um, you know, when you listen to pro football focus, it's kind of like they talk out of both sides of their neck. Um, at the end of last season, they talked about how we had the best offensive line in football. And I dare say we have not had the best offensive line in football in quite a few years. We can finally put that to rest that we have the best offensive line in football. It's kind of like revisionist history. And when they list the reasons why we had the number one offense, you looked offensive line, you looked at the players that they said that were there, most of them didn't play the season because of injury or failing to take drug tests. Um, what you get with a lot of these things, and this is what I learned from actually being at training camp is, <coughs> excuse me, what you get from a narrative standpoint from writers' eyes, especially ones that are only there for a small snippet, is maybe different than what you will see as the totality of it. You're only looking at a window moment here of maybe a few plays versus the totality of everything that's been going through. Um, the Cowboys have 99 problems, but I don't think that Jalen Tolbert's going to be one of those. But then again, you know, there's a reason why I'm here in my basement as opposed to on the sidelines for the Dallas Cowboys. But I um, hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. We are sitting here. Oh, my God. I look, love this. Every day I sit here. We are 23 days, 3 hours, 21 minutes, and 30 seconds away from kickoff of the 2029 season. And, man, I'm happy. I will catch you guys on the flip side, and uh, I appreciate you. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Hurts. The pass. Throws. Pick. Horrible pass. Oh my god.